You know what Twitter needs? It needs a feature that detects how hard you're hitting the keys when you're typing a tweet. And if it's hard enough to indicate rage tweeting, then it just locks you out for 24 hours and tells you to go calm down. It could be like those devices that an alcoholic gets on their car where the car won't even start unless they can pass a breathalyzer first. I don't know. It's just a thought. So, another celebrity has managed to step in it. This time, it's Australian singer Sia, whose trailer for the film Music, a film that she wrote and directed, generated some criticism from the autistic community, which she has responded to by throwing what's hard to describe as anything other than a hissy fit. So, some of you might be confused, because almost all of that sounds like it's outside my wheelhouse. I don't talk music, I don't generally talk about these kinds of movies, and while I do talk about representation, I generally stick to LGBTQ plus representation and have never touched on autism specifically. And all that's true, and part of it's the reason why this is in the break room, but the simple fact is that this pattern often boils down to the exact same bullet points regardless of whether the celebrity in question bungled an issue of race, gender identity, or neurodivergency. So this all seems hauntingly familiar, despite the fact that the specifics were a little different. Plus, having talked through it with a few friends of mine, including one who did me the favor of giving me feedback on this particular video before I sat down and embarrassed myself, I do now actually want to talk about it. Despite there being a pretty trackable pattern of insensitivity and or obliviousness among numerous celebrities, the thing that sticks out as the issue in these cases is that of who is given the right to tell the story. Now, no one would dare claim that a black person is incapable of acting in or directing a film about a black character. No one would be shocked to find out that a gay actor was cast in a gay role. And... While I've said before, I would not bar anyone from being able to tell certain stories, I have always cautioned that you need to step outside of your sphere of experience with great caution. And when this happens, I can't help but ask, why do those who are able-bodied and neurotypical believe that they are better equipped to tell disabled and neurodivergent stories? I mean, the underlying implication is that disabled and neurodivergent people are not capable of telling their own stories. Unintended implication, I'm sure, but it's still there. So let's go over some of the basics here. Now, the film in question is called Music, and it focuses on a character of the same name who is autistic and whose connection to music helps them navigate their day-to-day -day life. So the trouble kind of started based off two initial facts. One... The actress in the title role is not herself autistic, and the fact that the film had ties to the organization Autism Speaks, I'll circle back on that. Now, the issue of the actress not being autistic herself speaks to the exclusion of underrepresented groups from the telling of their own story, something I've talked about before over on Council of Geeks. Now, Sia attempted to defend the casting by saying that she had originally cast an autistic actor who wasn't comfortable with some of the scenes, and she then felt it was, in her words, more compassionate to use the actress that she did and was quick to point out that there were other autistic actors elsewhere in the film. However, it didn't help her case when it was learned that the actress now in the role studied videos of autistic people having meltdowns as part of her preparation, and much of the autistic community has long denounced such videos as highly invasive and exploitative. What helped even less was when an autistic actor said they and many people they knew would have been happy to step into the role on short notice, Sia responded by saying that, quote, Maybe you're just a bad actor. So that kind of sets the tone uh, for where things went from there. On that specific comment of maybe you're just a bad actor, Sia's success in the music industry may well have given her the confidence and the ego to go forward believing that pure determination will always lead to artistic achievement. 
Current star of the film, Maddie Ziegler of Chandelier Music Video fame, has a history of working with Sia. And as noted, Maddie is neurotypical. This would seem to indicate that when the original actor wasn't comfortable, Sia turned to someone she knew rather than holding any kind of casting process to find a new autistic actor. And I wasn't able to find any paper trail that pointed to open casting on the project actually at any stage. This does not appear to be a case of Maddie being the only one fit to play the title role, which is a concept I've actually debunked before anyways. This, instead, appears to be a case of Sia's own biases and fears influencing her casting decisions. And those fears may honestly have been justified, as I imagine having one autistic actor bow out might give her reason to fear it happening again. But letting that fear drive the casting decision doesn't lead anywhere good. It's like those people who say, well, you can't have a trans actor in a story about transition. They'd get dysphoria when they play the birth gender earlier on. Well, you know what? Trans actors are not a monolith and neither are artistic ones. Something that makes one uncomfortable does not preclude others from being able to play the role and do what is required in it. And if it does turn out that every person you look to is uncomfortable, then maybe that's a big red flag about what's in your script. This entire reaction points to an ignorance of the autistic community and her inexperience as a director. So let's uh, loop back around to Autism Speaks. This is an organization that is actually pretty controversial within the autistic community for a number of reasons. Firstly, it's not really designed with autistic people in mind, but rather the parents of autistic people. That in and of itself needn't be an issue, as parents can and are sometimes in need of support. But the group encourages parents to go through stages of grief for their child, who, let's be clear, is very much still alive. And the group has long pushed for a cure for autism. Now, this is something that's no longer publicly stated on their website, but nothing about the group's MO has fundamentally changed to reflect an actual shift in intention. And the issue there is the very large number of autistic people who don't feel that the fact that their brains process differently means that they're in some way broken or need to be cured. So, yeah, an organization with an at best mixed standing in the autistic community. So coming back to Sia herself, she went from attempting to defend her choices, stating she'd been researching the film for, I'm sorry, exact words were, um, three f***ing years, while at the same time claiming to have no idea that Autism Speaks was a controversial organization. And that immediately brings into question the nature of this research. Were you actually researching the full scope of living life as an autistic person and the forces in the world that impact such a life? Or were you only looking at them from the outside, as would seem to be indicated by having your actress study meltdown videos? And honestly, the fact that her research led to an organization like Autism Speaks isn't actually all that unusual, or in my opinion, even unforgivable. While that fact was rightly criticized, so far as I can track it, the real anger and outrage and pain stem from the fact that after autistic fans made it perfectly clear that Autism Speaks does not represent them, and in fact has been called out by autistic advocates as a harmful organization, Sia offered not an apology, but instead excuses and defensiveness. She fundamentally failed to see that this is not about her. And her responses paint a picture of herself as someone who feels entitled to their creative vision, no matter how inaccurate or uninformed it is, and no matter who it hurts. When films are made in our current cultural climate about characters who are part of marginalized groups, you need to expect those marginalized groups will have strong opinions about how they are being represented to the public. And the more underrepresented the group is, the more they're going to nitpick even the best representation because they see themselves so rarely. 
This isn't people being overly sensitive. It's folks trying to keep themselves and those around them educated and aware. Now, I'm not going to go through every tweet that's gone out on this whole thing, as I feel like I've hit the primary points that I wanted to, and I, I don't feel like keeping up with this to see where else it goes right now. But to give you a sense of the escalation, this eventually got to the point where Sia tweeted, Grr, fuck me, fuck, why don't you watch my film before you judge it? Fury! Yeah, and before anybody tries to make a case in her defense by quoting me any particularly nasty tweets sent to her on this issue, one, I don't endorse such behavior, seriously, don't harass people online, and two, the actions of a tiny portion of people does not negate the hurt originally caused. So, just don't. The fact that this kind of thing is happening yet again, it just tends to make me very, very tired. The most direct comparison to something that I have actually talked about before would be when Scarlett Johansson was cast to play a trans man. And while she did leave that project following the backlash, she seemed more bitter than apologetic and never seemed to fully understand why people took issue with that casting. Now, here's the thing. I can actually make certain allowances I can understand that people in show business, they kind of live in a bubble. And while it may be disappointing, it's not really all that surprising to find out that, well, that they just don't get it. I mean, where do you think that Imagine video from earlier in this interminable year came from? So, I'm not necessarily going to get annoyed at somebody like Sia for not realizing that this was a bad idea. Okay, that's not true. I'll get a little annoyed if she really did do three years of research and never realized any of this might be a bad idea, but still, I, I can cut some slack. But where people tend to lose me is in how they react to the criticism, especially the criticism coming from the community they're purporting to represent and celebrate. And look, I get what it feels like when you get pushed back from places you didn't expect it. It can throw you off. It can leave you confused and very frustrated. But if you can't take a breath and realize what a bad look it is to be telling off autistic people who have an opinion on your movie about an autistic person, well, that's beyond just making a mistake. That's, that's being an entitled jerk. You think you have the right to tell any story you like, and let's be clear, you do, but you don't have the right to be free of criticism for doing it. And you should be able to recognize that some people have pretty firm ground to stand on and criticize you from, and maybe, you know, just let them say their piece. This kind of thing, it keeps happening and it will continue to happen, but it does not have to always go down this way. I can actually think of a few examples in recent memory of celebrities who made a misstep and owned up to it, namely Terry Crews and Halle Berry. Crews had in the past expressed some hurtful views towards homosexuality, something he since owned up to and apologized for, specifically after talking with some of his co-workers on the set of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, in particular, the openly bisexual Stephanie Beatrice. As for Halle Berry, she let drop the fact that she had lined up a role as a trans person, and at first it looked like it was going to be Scarlett Johansson all over again, but then she quickly removed herself from the project, and issued a very heartfelt apology in which she recognized her failure to understand before why this would have been a problem for her to take on that role. She explained what she didn't know and demonstrated that she does now know it. In both these cases, the people involved didn't tell the people they'd hurt to stop complaining or anything that could be interpreted that way. And... I'll just throw this out there. I don't think it's coincidental that the two examples I thought of off the top of my head on how to listen to under or misrepresented communities <laughs> weren't white. Because it's almost as if white people enjoy a 
privilege of some kind, like thinking they don't have to listen to anyone else. Look, I don't doubt that Sia was passionate about the project. She wouldn't have sunk as much time and energy into it if she wasn't. But passion does not exempt you from critique, and critique need not reflect on who you are as a person unless you respond to it like it does. I want to give a special thanks to my friend Meg Kossaboom, who is not autistic but was able to lend me some perspective from her position as a disabled person. And thank you for sticking all the way through the end. If you are celebrating Thanksgiving this week, I hope you do so safely. And whatever your thoughts are on this or any similar such situations, drop them on down in the comments and let's talk about it. Usual stuff, like, share, subscribe, there's a Patreon, and uh, I'd appreciate the help, but you also don't have to. Take a relaxed attitude around here and you can just come on back next time you need a break.